everybody. Welcome back to the Playing With Power podcast, the issue-by-issue issue retrospective about Nintendo Power magazine. You've tuned in for part two of volume 57 from February of 1994. I am your host, Ben, and with me as always are my co-hosts, Hello. Mike and John. Yo. And returning guest with us is Rich Reader from the first half of the first half. I think it was the uh, second I mean, the second half. half of the first half. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. Got that wrong there. I think it was Very actually like the seventh, eighth. Hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Well, welcome back. It was like the Bugs um, Bunny rampant rampage levels. Like, it was part two, yes. it was part, part point, point three of five over 12. Okay. So we're picking it up at uh, page 58 with Super Metroid. Mike, take it away. All right. We are facing, we're, we're reading Super Metroid by the Benny Maru Ito who, again, is ripping off Disney with his signature, but, you know, that's <laughs> cool, because his art is fantastic, so he 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 gets a lot of uh, getting away with it. We get to see Samus blasting these head thingies and uh, firing off missiles, and we get to see them screaming at her, and then she screams, and then one of them blasts her, and her suit explodes, and we get to see her die right off the bat, and that was a very fun comic, and it's all over. Oh, wait a second. Next page. It was all a dream. And she was on her bedstand as Word Up Magazine. I'm pretty sure Rich <laughs> would get that. He's street. He'll get it. He'll get the reference. Oh, yeah. I'm from the ghetto. <laughs> the that, ghetto. Is that like Mad Magazine in Canada? He's, he's from the Ottawa ghetto. No, Word Up Magazine. You know, from, uh, from, from Biggie. Green, Word Up Magazine. A chubby nigger on the scene. Yeah. And uh, we get to see her wake up, and again, wonderful color schemes. She's completely purple. And then she uh, wakes up, and only her hair is purple, and she's in bed saying, Oh, what a dream. And it's 5 a.m., another day, another battle. Samus Aran is my name. I'm a bounty hunter. When the Galactic Federation is in trouble, they call on me. A while ago, I extinguished two big threats. It was my fighting finesse. And the power suit that made me protector of the galaxy. Then we get to see her get into her awesome ship, take off, but then this blue ship is following her. Who could it be? And we get to see her reminisce again for our benefit. The space pirates of Zebes created an army of the powerful Metroids. The leader of the army was a massive gray matter known as the Mother Brain. I obliterated the threat and was rewarded for my efforts. And uh, we get to see her getting a letter of commendation from Jar Jar Binks. And she says, After my adventures on Zebes, an even larger group of Metroids was discovered on SR-388, the Metroid's home planet. The Galactic Federation called on me to destroy them once and for all. The Metroids were stronger than the one on Zebes, and they had a new leader, the Metroid Queen. After I finished off the Queen, I discovered a hatchling. Since I was the first creature it saw, it thought that I was its mother. <laughs> and then we get to see her uh, machine go beep boop, beep boop. And she realizes that the colony she left it on is under attack. And then we get to see the colony with, uh, apparently it's not under attack, but it's throwing a rave. Because we get to see disco lights all over the place. And she's thinking, I turned over the hatchling to the space colony scientists. And as she's landing, she realizes that the lab is going up in smoke. And uh, when she comes in, she sees the scourge of Zebes. It's Ridley. <laughs> scourge of Zebes sounds like a STD. <laughs> <laughs> so then Ridley's got the Metroid hatchling, and he tells Samus, it's been a long time. Not long enough. The mother brain will reward me handsomely for this prize. You won't get away with this. You may have beaten us once, but never again. Now say goodbye to your precious colony. And then she says, what are you talking about? Then he says, I programmed the main computer to self-destruct. Nothing, soon this place will be nothing but junk. Sayonara, space cadet. So apparently as an alien, he's fluent on Japanese. <laughs> and then he goes, it's been a blast. And then uh, she says, here we go again. And she takes off through the base, finds the main computer, logs into it, access denied, access denied. And then we get to see her head go off like Spider-Man's spider sense, saying the colony will self-destruct in 100 seconds. The countdown begins now. And then uh, she bumps into somebody, which is uh, different from the game. 
And he goes, what are you doing here? Samus, let's go. No time to explain. Houston, get on the ship. Hurry. 90, 50, 70. And uh, he says, we're out of here. And then the place goes kaboom. And then mm. she says, I guess that evens you up for the time I saved you on the asteroid belt. Let's not make a habit of this. Now I've got to find Ridley and the hatchling. So whoever this Houston guy is, he's again someone made completely for the comic. And <laughs> the space colony is going up in smoke. Which again, too bad Brandon's not here. If you if you name a character Houston, you're pretty much setting up the Houston we have a problem joke, right? I mean like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you have to it's the only immediately. Thing. <laughs> yeah. So okay, I, I that's like that's like naming it. That's like naming a gunfighter Tex. <laughs> I've never been Tex. A, we have a problem. Uh, no, nice work. shooting Tex. I've never uh. been huge into the Metroid games, but um, so is she a Metroid? Are you Metroid is the floating. Oh. Metroid is the floating. Have, Richard brain. was nice having you on the show. Yeah, man. you're banished. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think I've talked about how I never understood the, the craze about the Metroid games, and I've played a number of them. Although everyone says Super Metroid is the best, and I believe I said it before, and I'll say it again, I will play and attempt to attempt to get through Super Metroid. Yeah, uh, it's worth it. Uh, before we get to the coverage, Me I, to see if I like the game. Yeah, Metroid. Enjoyed, that'll be my final decision about the Metroid series. <laughs> Metroid. I enjoyed the hell out of Super Metroid. Metroid Prime on the GameCube is actually my favorite. <laughs> um, it, it is not bad. I enjoyed that yeah. too. Um, but yeah, Super Metroid like it plays well. Um, as as it's basically a shooter with like puzzle elements built in because you have to gain your abilities to like get past certain areas. I mean, like it's it's not exactly tough. It but you know it's enjoyable. Like. I, I can't understand I, I can understand the mindset of like oh this isn't amazing compared to like stuff that's out today but it was you know pretty solid uh, yeah. compared compared to like the stuff of the time it was a good game yeah well we'll see about that <laughs> I don't know if like I yeah. like there's, like, there's, like, there's, like there's probably a reason probably why, reason why you don't see like, like Metroid, Metroid out of the, the Switch, Switch yet. yet yeah but, yeah, but Metroid yeah. Metroid is the is the boss uh so you're you're yes. battling Metroid. <laughs> the bad guys. <laughs> no, there's, there's not a bad guy called Metroid. Metroid is that little thing in the jar. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, like you're fighting your way to Metroid. Sorry. They really don't like naming their games after the heroes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so what? It, it starts Donkey Kong uh, was you know not it was about the boss. So Disney uh, likes killing off parents. Asteroids. And Nintendo likes naming their um, games after the enemy. Yeah, yeah Legend, like Legend of Zelda, where Legend you get to play Zelda. Zelda. Yeah, Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah, I guess not, just not the hero in general. <laughs> right. She's not quite the enemy. Unless it's because she never gives in to him in the cartoon series. What a bitch. I mean, at least there's, like, <laughs> like Kid Icarus is, like, the title character, obviously. But Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers are, yeah. So yeah, there's some I games. Because it, it's really only one of them that's the main character, and we all know it. Tetris. <laughs> you get to play Tetris. <laughs> to play Tetris. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Counselor's Corner. Uh, we're here to not talk about the games, but talk about the guys behind these. Dungeon Master, we have Ken Warnock. And uh, what's he got here? He's got the official jersey on, the black shirt underneath, so his neck just sort of appears in the background. He looks like the warm with the head. He looks like the warm up guy for like a southern comedian. <laughs> like not the successful what? southern comedian but like the warm up guy I like the that. opener like, he, yeah, he's not big, big enough for Larry the cable guy or Bill Engvall so he's he's like the he's the guy that comes and announces hey okay, yeah. we got so and so coming out next next up yeah you can see that remember when your sister got arrested for meth yeah oh yeah that's everyone that's right <laughs> <laughs> everyone can relate to that and if you can't that's because you're still in lockup <laughs> hmm Next up for Secret of Mana, we have Greg Roan. Who looks like the dad from Coach. Or Poltergeist. He, he looks like dude. Coach. Craig T. Nelson. He looks like Coach. Yeah, he's not the dad from Coach. He's Coach. <laughs> well, wasn't Coach a dad? Yeah, but he's not. Coach, <laughs> the title character is Coach. <laughs> he looks like Coach. Yeah, so we use, uh, he, he's covering one of my favorite games. And I think everyone can agree here it's a good game. And everyone who's played it. Uh, Secret mm -hmm. of Mana. And no rich, you don't play a character called Mana. <laughs> and 
And Craig T. Nelson, honor, honored alumnus of University of Arizona, by the way, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Next game is the Seventh Saga, and we have Marty Poppins. That has to be a porn name. That, there's no way that's not a porn name. <laughs> he looks happy enough and goofy enough for one, that's for sure. The beard, <laughs> the beard and like haircut combo, not the best. No, no funny, he's I like. Actually, <laughs> I think I've had that combo before. Ah! <laughs> I think I've had that combo before. No, but really, like, I mean, at least he looks a lot like your Skype picture, which keeps flashing. So. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> a little bit. You stole my look. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but your hair is better than his. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the beard. Oh, don't forget the beard. Yeah. He's got some, you know. It's a weak it, beard. Three day shadow going on. His beard game is not nearly on point. Not no. strong. No. <laughs> no. No, it's patchy. All right. You know, like he had a nice beard until, you know, Chernobyl went nuts. Oh, God. All right. And then uh, Jenny Pierce, who looks straight out of your local food court, um, is giving us tips on Z- Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. She's got the the heavy bang look going on that that early nineties. Just she looks like an extra from, from Saved by the Bell. Yeah, yeah that's what in I was the thinking. Yep. <laughs> okay, power player challenge. Uh, we don't need to talk about the challenges so much, but the art at the top got the dick nose drawer drawing. Uh, there's a. How is this fish? How is this fish? How is this fish how is this nervous? The fish is alive. Well, the fish is dead. alive, but he's about to be eaten. He's already yeah. open. Look, look, look where the sea is. He's been cut open. His his head is removed, and yet he's still nervous. He's, yeah, I don't. I think something with the dick nose drawer. He has to make half the people either sweating or excited, where there's sweat coming out of their faces. No, my. I, mean, it's just a I think the sea is actually a fin because if you look down. Yeah, it's a gill or fin or something. Ah. that's just a fin. So mm-hmm. his skull. Drops suddenly to his narrow body. <laughs> yeah, they've like flayed his back into. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, into the layers. His back so it's only halfway done eating. Yeah, exactly. They flayed him so that they I could, uh, you know, spell stuff with his back. Yeah, eat him while he's still alive. Right. Picked clean in between mm. each letter. I'm just mm-hmm. disappointed. I'm just dark. disappointed that he's not on the back of a naked Asian lady. <laughs> That's how I live my life. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about like what these, what, what the look on their faces, like the the guy with the sweat coming off of him, he he just looks happy, right? But the other guy, he looks like he's enjoying the process of torturing this fish. He's playing with yeah. his nipples. Like, sick. Well, he's the thing that <laughs> sticks out to me is they both have red bows on, red uh, bow ties on, so it looks like the you know, the two sides of Howard. Phillips looked he look, The one on the right looks like how an ISIS member looks at a new goat <laughs> when it comes to town. The, the, this guy. Looks like he's about to say, excellent. <laughs> yeah, the, guy, the, like, yeah, the guy that's not holding any instruments, he looks like the guy in South Park from the customer service guy who's like, when he's hearing how dissatisfied you are, he's rubbing his nipples. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next section here. S M A R T, Super Mario All Stars Report Team. It's a special section. We've got uh, an insert here of President Bill Clinton with the uh, creator of the internet, Vice President Al Gore, <laughs> staying next to him, handing out uh, something to some kids. Yeah, I don't, like, what is, like, Clinton looks like he has something hidden behind the paper. Which <laughs> is why he's smiling so hard. Slick he's like, leg. you're going to get a lot, and the, and, and, and the, and the boy in the group, uh, like you know, the young the young boy knows what's behind it. He's looking at him like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's covering his. Well, yeah. Well, look at the, look where it is. It's at waist level. Yeah. So n- now you know why all the white guys are laughing. They're just like, "Oh, Bill, whipping it out again." <laughs> oh, that that cheeky guy. And one day, he, one w- one day, like, one day he's gonna get in trouble. Mario, and then, like he's sitting there about to ask the little girl to come and sit on his lap. And then you've been a bad girl this a year. And then in the bottom right, we have a uh, smart member Justin Hayes meeting Dick Army, who's like surprised that they let a black kid in his office. <laughs> that actually is his name, by the way, Dick Army. Uh, they they wrote it out as Richard Army, but he goes by Dick Army. <laughs> oh my god! And then uh, Christian Slope represents or presents a copy of the platform to Representative Paul Kajorski in his office as well. 
So, so what is this like? This is a, a like some uh, sort of Nintendo polled a bunch of kids to say like they commissioned a youth research organization to find out what issues were important to kids and reached out to them and they found the best and brightest kids that responded to the survey and put together this team which they called the Super Mario All-Stars Report Team and they flew them to Washington to uh, meet with uh, members of the U.S. House of Representatives they also got the photo with the President and Vice President uh, a couple of Senators and uh, wow then basically talk to them about those issues. It's not really video game related. Apparently, Al Gore called on drugs. one of the one of the representatives, Sean Donahue, in an, one of the presidential press briefings. So they like they had the kid ask a question during the press briefing. That's kind of cool. So, so the problems that concern the most were AIDS, homelessness, um, safe to be from home, Bowser related accidents. Um, <laughs> worried that someday their <laughs> families would be homeless. So. That's basically what they talked well, about, and it helped pass the Brady Bill. It's a good oh. thing. It's it's a good thing they fixed all that, and America was fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> Great the Brady. job! You handed all these delicate issues to a bunch of thirteen-year-olds who were probably too busy reading their Team Bop magazines and listening to their rap music to actually get the issues done. Oh my God, the Corys! Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have like the Mario. Uh, Lawrence by that time? No, <laughs> not yet, right? <laughs> yeah, Joey, yeah, Joey Lawrence. That'd be about. Yeah, Joey be about Lawrence right. was on Blossom. That's about right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Whoa, so I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, uh, and we have the the crazy awkward Mario like mascot that we've seen in the past has made his way oh, to Washington. He looks like fucking. He's about to ask them to like sit on his lap and ask for presents or something. Yeah. Like he's creepy looking. He's super <laughs> creepy. The guy normally plays Santa. Hey little girl, how would you like a mustache ride? <laughs> <laughs> it's big anyway. enough for you and your friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> next game. For Game Boy, this is now the third time we talked about this terrible <laughs> Ben, Spider-Man and the X-Men and Arcades Revenge. Ben can't get the taste of this. this ben can't get the taste of this game out of his mouth. <laughs> so. We got fucking Wolverine looking like Dracula. What the hell happened to him? Just yeah. like last night's Taco Bell, it keeps coming back up. <laughs> and it keeps smelling the same. So... That's right. But still... Well, it's the same game. Yeah, we got the cover with Arcade with his... Uh, with a bow tie not even Howard Phillips would wear. Spider-Man swinging into action with Cyclops, Storm, and Vampire Wolverine. <laughs> well, I mean, they're both, yeah. they both live forever, so... <laughs> Can it really be called... God, this game is atrocious. Three of them. <laughs> and one's a woman. Yeah. Two, two males are technically men, so... <laughs> one's a woman... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have Gambit in the in the game. Mm -hmm. He just not in that art. Mosh. <laughs> there's a terrible Gambit level. A terrible. Cy Wolverine there's a Cyclops level. level. Yeah, there's a Cyclops level. Not level. Terrible Storm level. Yeah. Or Juggernaut. So yeah. Box, I guess never mind. Mm -hmm. This game's hot garbage when it was on Nintendo on the NES. <laughs> now it's crap and on the go. Now that heart, you can take that hard garbage to go. <laughs> oh, oh my God! You look at look at Juggernaut. He's made of fucking blocks. It's like if Juggernaut was made of Legos. There was what page are you looking at? Oh, uh, eighty-one. Bottom one right. Like really, really good. Oh um, my God, that's Juggernaut. Yep. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that is awful. Yep. That's really terrible. And you but battle one of the, that looks like a Lego man. Yeah. yeah. How is Wolverine bigger than anybody in this game? <laughs> Wolverine, and he's bigger than everybody. That is the worst said, Bob. Yep. <laughs> juggernaut I've ever seen in my life. And then uh, we've got... A child could draw Juggernaut better than that. Um, uh, last Stand. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> that, that I'm saying, that guy's better than this. And then we've got... You battle... I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. You battle one of the, <laughs> the Sentinel robots. Where's Jason Statham? And you... Uh, <laughs> You battle arcade. I'll be lots of movies with Jason Statham. You, ba you battle arcade. Oh, I was in Snatch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh it was cop stopping two lock and barrels. 
Sorry. Go ahead, John. Well, I was saying you battle Arcade. Arcade's the final boss, and you do battle one of the Sentinel robots at the end of the Cyclops oh my stage. God. So. Another horrible uh, illustration. That does not even look re- remotely like a Sentinel. Yeah. It looks they re- more like Harambe. It's because they had the and like the bosses face forward oh, and the player places faces sideways, so it's just like. Oh, you know who that is? That's Mecha Rambe. <laughs> Mecha Rambe. <laughs> Mecha Rambe. <laughs> we can rebuild him. We have the technology. <laughs> he has the technology to find all the dicks out. Harambe versus <laughs> Mecha Rambe. So, um. Coming soon to a theater near you, man. And speaking of <laughs> terrible <laughs> licensed games, we have Bart and the Beanstalk. Oh my so. god, I've never heard of this. How is it that the, like, I remember Simpsons and X-Men games for the SNES being good. <laughs> How did they get the two same properties for the Game Boy being terrible? Um, um it's because, like, like <laughs> they try really hard to, like, port over, not realizing the platforms, like... I don't know. I think the I, know. I think this won't work. Yeah, the yeah, the, the programmers really got programmers shortchanged really got pretty hard on this. <laughs> it seems so. only Nintendo was able to make good games for the Game Boy. <laughs> like Tetris, Dr. Mario, Kirby's uh, Pinball. Like I think you can, uh, it's not true. The Castlevania games are good. The Bionic Commando games are good. I think Can we talk about the missile? Yeah, that is definitely a dick missile. <laughs> that is a, that's not a penis. Missiles out for Harambe. Uh, games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. And then, like the Ferguson game, you battle the crackers, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, They're yeah, like dream bubbles. All right, I don't know what the hell. So okay, let's let's hear. Homer manages to bungle things again after he discovered that Bart's magic beans were not candy. He spit them out, and the mysterious beanstalk began to grow. Hmm. <laughs> If they were supposed to be in, like, uh, peasant times, like, looking at the way Bart's dressed, like, one, Mr. Burns looks like a Boy Scout, and two, Homer looks like he's still wearing his work shirt, and these are supposed to be in, like, medieval times. Like, they didn't have anything with collars back then. I don't know. If you look at the the actual drawing of um, Mr. Burns a couple pages later, it looks like he's wearing, like, lederhosen. Yeah, that's just saying like a Boy oh, Scout there. He's beer fest right now. <laughs> it's just in the uh, in the Game Boy screenshot. He looks like a Boy Scout leader. Interesting. Am I the only one that's like super disappointed that the boss Aunt Zilla doesn't look like Aunt Patty and Aunt Selma? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it, it looks that's a, a misopportunity. It looks like a cheap attempt at Mo. It doesn't even look like a Zilla anything. Like Aunt yeah. Zilla usually means like really big and crazy, right. but in the picture it's smaller than Bart, and Bart is a three foot tall boy. <laughs> so how big is Aunt Zilla really? Yeah. And so one one uh, thing that's uh, you know before you go on, I got to talk about the uh, intro to the entire okay. game, where even at Hint of Power, where they're talking about the whole game, they say the game is disappointing because you start with a limited number of lives. Three to be exact, mm. and no continues. These parameters turn an otherwise enjoyable action game to an avoidable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be here's a game where you'll be worried about falling from a vine or taking a hit that, that your enjoyment level will be severely diminished. Oh so, my god! <laughs> oh my god! It was so bad that they had to warn you. Yeah, this really fucking sucks. But we we're talking. This is right up at the top of the article where they had our entire. <laughs> we're gonna talk about like, it what, anyway. Page six page feature. Yeah, that's a lot of coverage here. We're I mean, they're trying about it, but they're it's trying like, to they're trying to get Mike to play. They have blowholes on page eighty-seven, and uh, <laughs> it's an avoidance game. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I like the uh, um, Mr. Burns slug type thing. Yeah. Cloud. What is that? Monty Cloud. Monty Cloud monster. It's Montgomery Burns as a cloud or something. Mm. It's really bizarre and creepy looking. This is just terrible. Hmm. And uh, then you, there's this level where you just jump across the crackers on a soup bowl. And. Oysters! Then uh, Lisa's the harp, and then you <laughs> end up fighting Homer the giant. Or, like, you end up leading him on a chase. I love the way that Mike reads things. He just sees, like, Harp Lisa. He's like, Harp Lisa! <laughs> <laughs> 
There's some words on the page. <laughs> oh, there's a picture. Well, we're reading the magazine. I'm pretty sure these people would Squirrel. like to know what's in the magazine besides just, like, you know what it's about. Yeah, but you didn't, like, process, like, any part of any... All right, whatever. <laughs> there's a Harp Lisa. <laughs> really, what more is there to say about Harp Big Homer. What more is there to say than Harp Lisa? There's Bart. <laughs> there's a harp. There's an illustration for no reason of a harp. With Lisa's head attached to the end. Well, of it's, it. it's Jack and the Beanstalk, so you're rescuing the harp, and the harp just happens to be Lisa. Hmm. I thought I thought you were I thought chicken. you were stealing the golden goose. Yeah, golden goose. Yeah, not a harp. The goose who lays the golden eggs. Well, there's both. Like, what? Bart did you needs ever, to pick did up. You ever see, did you ever watch Mickey and the Beanstalk? It starts off with a no. singing harp talking about what, how it's a lovely day. Then the shadow comes over the land, takes the uh, harp, the land falls into ruin, then Mickey grows the beanstalk, then he ends up fighting uh, the harp. Bart needs and, to pick uh, up the bag of gold, the harp, yeah. and the goose that lays the golden eggs. I was eggs. just about to say that. Oh, just seen okay. It, yeah. yeah. Very good. And then Homer chases you down. You have to, like, you have to get down before Homer can catch up to you. There's and no time to waste. And then there's Bart flipping off the player for buying this stupid game. And then, you know, obviously, like in the Brandon uh, mode, uh, don't worry about taking a hit or two. <laughs> in yeah. fact, it's encouraged. Mm -hmm. All right. On with odd games. This is, uh, oh, it's an NES game. Okay. I was like, why is it colored? Star Tropics 2. Yeah. Zoda's Revenge. Why is it colored? I think we might um, have talked about Star Tropics 1 the last time I was on. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, that was old then. No, we, th we had John by then. I Why think. are they they, they... they never split the word in any of these... Like, now, it's still Star Tropics, like... They've, like, made it into one word for some reason. Star Tropics. Right. Star Tropics. And then we find a, uh, a, a devil monster summoning a Tetrad, because it's Tetris because it's owned by <laughs> Nintendo. Jeez. And then, like, a non-licensed Zelda. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought that was the, uh, the C what was it, the CDI version? <laughs> oh, God, that that's such an yeah. awful game. All right, oh, so fun. what do we have? It's we it's like when part, stop, let's, let's make a game with clip art. When part-time rapper and adventurer Mike Jones clobbered the... Jones. Mike Jones! Oh. Clobbered the alien. Caught a pog. <laughs> Clobbered the alien leader, Zoda, in orbit over the South Seas. He thought that his hero days were over, but in fact, they've only just begun. Mike's uncle, Doctor J, found a puzzle on the side of the escape pod that carried <laughs> seven <laughs> space. Oh my God, Doctor J. Mike Jones, Doctor J. This kid found, is too fucking white. Found in his puzzle. He should, on he should have been black. The escape pod that carried seven space children. The solution of the puzzle will send Mike tumbling through time in search of seven magic tetrads. The Star Tropics sequel is a must for NES action and adventure fans. Oh my god, I was right. I didn't even see the bottom. He, It's like, Mike, it's like Zoda's Revenge. And now we're tetrising it. Yay! So... What's weird about this article is, like, every insert looks like it was done with colored pencil. Like, they didn't grab any graphics from the game because they're like, crap, NES looks like shit, so what are we going to do? So they, like, hired an artist with colored pencil to, like, illustrate the game. It's a good job, though. Yep. Yeah, they did all right. So I like the <laughs> yum yum <laughs> illustration on page 93. That's awesome. So if Fry didn't get to fall asleep and wake up in the future, this is what he'd be up to. Yeah, he does look a little bit like Fry, doesn't he? He's got the same kind of hairdo action going on. He's got that <laughs> 90s denim on denim outfit look that everybody <laughs> loves so much. I mean... I'm going to yeah. go on a mission and save my super purple space haired, super purple haired space babe. <laughs> hey, Mike Jones, what's with the Canadian tuxedo, eh? <laughs> 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 oh yeah, he does. <laughs> denim on denim. Mm. <clears throat> All right, so he's got some new moves this time. He can uh, run, jump, and throw weapons diagonally. And there's also multi-level mazes, he, so it's got some... Does he still have the yo-yo? I won't say 3D, but... I love how... It says you're prepared for a new adventure, and we get to see a comparison, a screen comparison between Star Tropics and Zoda's Revenge, so we can see how the graphics have not improved. They look a little better, but yeah. They look a little better. Okay, not improved substantially. 
<laughs> so it's going through the uh, levels here. Uh, got present day Seattle <laughs> when uh, sort of storyline. And then he's falling, what, onto a plane? It's where Dr. J looking like a guidance counselor is giving you, like, <laughs> <laughs> your instructions for the game. Well, Mike, you demonstrate an aptitude for fighting aliens and solving ink and traps, so construction worker. <laughs> Dr. J says, do a 360, jump, 360 dunk from the foul line. The crowd will love it. <laughs> anyway. That's, uh, yeah, I was thinking of. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, so chapter two, it's we go into the cave community, battle of the cave dwellers. Um, looks like the boss is Yum Yum. You gotta you gotta hit him in his tum tum. I'm guessing. <laughs> Villain of the cave is a creature with a monster sized appetite. As you enter his chamber, he will feasting on wild boar. Interrupt his meal with an axe attack. Then Yum Yum starts to fight. Jump over his three rock blasts and counter with more axe power. So you spray him with, like, body spray until he passes out, I guess? <laughs> until he gets swarmed by women who are uncontrollably turned on. <laughs> if those commercials are to be believed. Yeah. So then, so you get a tetrad there, um, and then you go on to ancient Egypt. Uh, battle. Where you get to meet Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. She's waiting on her barge for an important delivery. And if you help Mike repeat the retrieve the item that Cleopatra craves, she will take you on to the next tetrad. Mm. Yay. So you got a sword there, apparently. Sword. S-word. Oh, 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 we find out what the item is, because we get the screenshot of you riding a camel and some other guy riding a Koopa, and it says, you've got the pizza. <laughs> Everything about this game is awesome. I think I need Cleopatra to play this. Cleopatra has been waiting for a pizza from Italy. Well, I guess Mark Anthony. I, I guess it. Mark Anthony guess was, Mark Italian. Anthony was Italian. So of course, so of course even like, like 1200, 1200 years ago, they had ago, pizza. pizza. Well, because Cleopatra Italians. was like a mixed ethnicity too, though, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she had a little Italian in her, if you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> little, little. Yeah. All right. So, um, what else do we have? Uh, then we go on to the Great Pyramid. Fight the Mask of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Tutankhamun's head. Just, like, historically accurate. Um, yep. And then, uh, see, the fourth chapter this is... The, this, is, is the second, this is the second Tutankhamun head we've seen in this issue. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was flown by Dr. Claw. <laughs> and so, let's see. Uh, chapter four, 19th century London. You're uh, teaming up with Sherlock Holmes. That that like can't that can't weird. that can't be licensed. There's no way. But <laughs> they don't have to license. Oh, that's right, because it's past. Pub yeah, it's public domain. Uh, uh, yeah, and he yeah, looks, looks kind, of, kind like, of like I don't know, like some uh, what was it like? If Boy George actually <laughs> like like dressed like a man, dressed like a the man. perspective of it is weird. Of it. But he dressed like a man. <laughs> and what's weird is they didn't do like the other side of his cap, so it's just like a baseball cap instead of the duck, like the duck hat. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Zoda X is a clone. Yeah, there's you battle Zoda's clone, Zoda X. He looks like he's not really wearing anything under. Like he looks like he's wearing a scarf <laughs> and maybe has something on, like a sleeve. Yeah, like super dark, like dark disembodied, body, body. like, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> Instead of flashing you with his penis, he's flashing you with the ever eternal void of darkness, which, which, I know he's called, him, called himself, uh, Zoda X, hmm. his X, penis. X gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to you. <laughs> All right, and then let's see, they, they, they kind of gloss over the, <laughs> the, Five through eight chapters, but see, chapter five is um, set in the Gold Rush, uh, San Francisco era. Chapter so six. Course, so of course you fight a skull, a skeleton. Yeah. Which I guess he's like a a, a, yep. a previously murdered prospector. <laughs> his claim jumped, and then we uh, get to meet yeah. Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. In chapter six. And you black and you fight Zoda Y there. Uh, so you have to. Why? Have because to... he's evil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then chapter seven is uh, has to battle Dracula, I'm assuming, because he's gone to Transylvania. Um, chapter eight is King Arthur, and you have to battle a dragon. Like this game, there's a lot going on here. And so for, kind of this going is on. kind of fucking cool. cool. Game, I want the basketball. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. And, and then nine. nine. 
When the last Tetrad is, last in, Mike's is in Mike's possession, a final battle final will take battle place with the alien, alien forces that have, that have been shadowing our hero. hero. Oh, let me guess, his name is Zoda Z? Zoda Z. <laughs> Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Jones. <laughs> the only thing I have in my head is Mac Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I never get to see a screenshot of you fighting Yum Yum again, but this time it's black and white. <laughs> Ooh, and we I thought this was a color. We, <laughs> we get details on advanced chapters next issue. Okay. Players poll contest. Third prize we have. Did I have five prizes? We have um, the Nintendo Power jersey T-shirt. Second prize you get a N- Super NES NBA Jam game pack. And an official NBA Jam basketball from Spawn. Oh shit! And then for the grand prize, That's pretty damn sweet. You can improve your hang time at NBA Jam and all your in-your-face prize package, including an NBA Jam arcade game, a Huffy Sports Cyclone portable basketball system, an Apex One NBA team jacket from the team of your choice. And they've choice. chosen the Supersonics. And of course, the game for NES. <laughs> they've chosen the Supersonics oh, for the, uh, you know, the... Because they're from Seattle. Yeah, now, and, and of course... Slam. And, and welcome to the jam. <laughs> now they're, uh, of course, known as the Oklahoma City Zombie Sonics. I mean, Thunder. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, pretty, you know, getting an arcade cabinet, that's pretty, that's pretty boss. I'm sure that's... And, and you get a fucking no, net for your backyard or your driveway. Yeah, those are awful because you have to, like, fill the base with water. <laughs> you know what's else? really cool, actually? That, that uh, arcade cabinet... If you'd kept that the whole time, you could turn that into a MAME arcade and played all of these games on there. Right. <laughs> it's actually got like a few buttons on there too with the joystick. So. Or you could it's sell it, sell it to an NBA Jam collector and like take the profits and make your own <laughs> MAME. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, NBA Jam yeah. Is, is just a MAME. Like that's the, as far as I'm concerned, the best basketball game ever made. <laughs> ever yeah. He's uh, definitely on fire. Definitely the best ar- arcade get basketball game. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, no, sure. no, no. I, uh, I, I follow you. I follow you, but it's pretty darn good. Big heads on fire. I mean, come on, it makes it makes basketball interesting. Playing as like Bill Clinton and all it's that about other. The only thing that could make <laughs> basketball interesting. <laughs> I don't know. NBA Street Volume Two was pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, pretty NBA good. Street was good actually. Right yeah, there, there's some solid yeah arcadey uh, basketball games it's out like there. An, so NBA Jam is like. The Def Jam Wrestling <laughs> of, of NBA. <sighs> All right, top 20. X going to give it to you. Let's see. We have Thanks Super NES. Okay. Top 20. Super NES, we have Mortal Kombat at the top spot. Uh, with for, It's been on the charts for three months. Uh, Super Street, or Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And Legend of Zelda Link to the Past is coming in at three. Super Mario All-Stars and Star Fox rounding out the top five. Ben, you want to knock the Game Boys out? Sure, for Game Boy, number one, we have Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for 10 months. Number two, Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins for 17 months. Number three, Mortal Kombat for the Game Boy for three months. And then rounding out the top five, we have Kirby's Dream Land at number four and Tetris at number five. All right, Richard, you want to, Mike, yeah, or Mike or Richard, Tetris, whoever, but. yeah. <laughs> Legend Mike, you take Zelda. it. 65 months at number one. Jeez. 52 months, Super Mario Brothers 3. And then first month, already already plowing it, already like streaking into second, third place, Tetris 2. Yeah, that's crazy. And rounding out Kirby's Adventure and Tecmo Super Bowl. Hmm. Okay, so we're getting the nail playing. We're going to do the same thing we did uh, last time, where we just go over the games we did that didn't cover um. on the uh, issue. <laughs> oh, I know. So they start off with the relief pitcher. Um, they said, uh, good pitching control, including super pitches. The scenario-based gameplay of the relief pitcher mode is great for quick games, while the starting pitcher mode gives you the chance to go the distance. However, the poor fielding perspective, low and looking out from the plate, makes controlling defensive players difficult. And difficult and it's so memorable, Ben didn't remember we covered it in the sports section. <laughs> Well, that's why I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. Idea. I mean, like, it's not that hard to just write the positive and the negative. Yeah, I think we're, we have a little funny. more. We have a little more time this time. So, if you want to okay. do choplifter, Mike. All right, all right. Choplifter, all right. choplifter three. three. Good, good, so good, good control, control of your chopper, your chopper, of your chopper, and constant shooting action. You get a real sense of combat, similar to Desert Strike, and the password lets you start where you left off. Very engaging. However, the missions aren't very complex and don't require much thought. Some enemies blast you when they're not even visible. 
<laughs> What's going on with Young Merlin, young Merlin. Richard? Richard. Um, I, I never even heard of that game, actually. Well, yeah, but what are they saying, though? So, what, like a fascinating hint system using symbols and Zelda-like adventure, <laughs> as well as puzzle solving, which is what we said. It's Zelda all over again. Excellent s- sound and interesting items and weapons. However, the graphics are rather small and not overly detailed. With play control, took some getting used to, uh, since... Th- Enemies can attack on the diagonal, as in Arcus Odyssey. The play isn't very deep. It's too bad. Uh, you had one job, Rich. Just read what's on the magazine. And you didn't do it. <laughs> All right, Rich, what do you want to tell us? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, well. So, championship pool. Um, pool is any way you like it. And that is what uh, you get with Mindscape's championship pool, and I doubt that very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, sports scene chalks up, uh, chalks up for a quick game this month. Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, probably be quick because I, I won't even play it. So <laughs> the quickest it can be, right? What are they, so there's 12 <laughs> games to choose from. Yeah, 12 <laughs> games to choose from includes most of the popular pool games as a like there's only one that I know. Uh, of. Pool. What, <laughs> what, what, what do you what do you mean most? Like, is there another stall where you just like smash the cue into the table? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean, right? Uh, and then uh, nice graphics with some cool viewpoints, which is um, interesting that there are different viewpoints in general. Like, <laughs> you got to uh, use that mode seven, bitch. First person <laughs> view or something like that. Oh, 60, man, that would be great. You hit the ball and then you just see everything just go flying all over the place. $65 yeah. to play pool on your Super Nintendo. No, thank you. Yeah, joke. yeah that's fucking terrible. And this is all coming right. from the guy that rented Super Solitaire. <laughs> and it's, uh, so it, it says, right. uh, some of the play controls are non-intuitive. You'll have to practice with this game before it feels natural. And, like, really, this is not, like, I don't think <laughs> then, now, or ever will a pool game be cool. <laughs> just, I'm just laying that out there. Stay in school. Don't play pool, kids. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, Ben, you want to tell us about Ranma One Half? Yeah, Ranma One Half, <laughs> based on the anime and uh, manga series, oh. where and they don't even mention it in the article. Where uh, I think if the boy gets splashed with cold water, he turns into a girl, and in hot water, he turns back into a boy. Anyway, <laughs> they don't bring that up in the game. It's a fighting game. Nice graphics and some unique characters, especially the panda. Fans of the comics should enjoy the game. The team mode gives it a different dimension. However, the gameplay is in the Street Fighter team mold. It's nothing new. Yep. I would have okay. liked to have seen this game get a little bit of coverage since uh, I remember watching some of the Ranma episodes and uh, it was a funny series and it had excellent music. I'm, I'm, literally, I'm picturing this fighting game Ranma like say you're you're fighting um, uh, a girl, but you're in you're in the boy mode, so you can't fight her, and you have to just keep blocking until like you can find the fountain and get splashed with water, and then you can fight her because now you're a girl. So it's like it's like Kate it's like Caitlyn Jenner the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in an excellent screenshot here. We get to see Ranma fighting his herself. No mm-hmm. girl Ranma fighting boy Ranma. <laughs> yep. All right, uh, okay. Mike, what, what's Mike going on? Mike, on side pocket. <laughs> okay, it says the control is easy and precise. It's another pool game, but at least they had the audacity not to tell you it's full price. You find that <laughs> out at the store. Control is easy and precise. The trick shooting option is challenging. Fewer, However, fewer pool games are included than championship pool. <laughs> so it's not as good as championship pool. <laughs> it's not as versatile <laughs> as, the other, as the other hit the white ball into the other colored ball games. Uh, and all right. So next we have probably my favorite game type of all time. High fashion doll simulation. <laughs> <laughs> we have Barbie Supermodel, the game. Holy Christ. All right. I'm actually going to read the whole thing because, you know. All right. Please do. You do. Have, do you Please have the do. look? Have you ever dreamed about being a high fashion model and what red-blooded American game player is hasn't? Here's your chance to see if you have what it takes. Identify different shades of eyeliner. <laughs> learn to walk on a runway in a fashion show. Drive a hot car at school zone speeds. Look into a mirror. 
Yes, you too can live the enchanted life of Barbie. Oh my god. I, if, there, if there's a taste test game that has to happen. Oh my god. Alright, Barbie. Wait, wait, wait. Which channel? <laughs> you get you get to live the life of a supermodel, including the mini game where you get to eat a salad with lightly garnished with cocaine. Yeah. Eat a salad using chopsticks. All right, <laughs> Barbie's fans will love the interactive nature of the super dr this super dress-up game. However, <laughs> the typical player probably won't find anything of interest. Expect a sort of sim model experience. Was wow. sim model a game we missed? Uh, no, I don't know. Did they just make it up? <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of games that are so good, they won't even cover them. What do we have? Uh, we have Mike. Oh, Super Mario Mario's Time Machine. It's a Mario game, something not made by Nintendo. However, it's made by Mindscape. Mm -hmm. Mindscape's second edutainment feature product featuring Nintendo's Mario character sends the famous plumber down the drains of time in search of stolen artifacts by time-tripping Koombas. Koopas. As with Mario is missing, the game has none of the action associated with the games you want. So, in this edutainment title, you'll collect information at different places and times which fill in the blanks of a quiz page. The one action element is time surfing which uses the mode 7 effect. So it's where in the world is Carmen Sandiego, but without Carmen Sandiego. I love Unlike how edutainment kind of tripped you up for a second, like you were like... Educate? No, that's not it. <laughs> no, wait, what? Mm -hmm. This is a and it's, one. And it's definitely not I, the first time he's heard that word, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. I don't think I fucked... I didn't fuck up that word, did I? Uh, maybe no, a little. You stuttered, like, for, like, a millisecond. It was kind of funny, because oh. I've never heard that word before. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I've said the word before. Second, and I was just like, oh, is he having the same thought I am? <laughs> no. They're making shit up now? No, they've used no, the word for a few episodes. No. We've so, covered this before with Captain Novelin and the Diabetes Squad, or whatever the fuck that game was. And, uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, we've covered several Diabetes games in the past. If you, if, if you on. listened, a <laughs> fan... <laughs> so, anyway, unlike Carmen San Diego games, you don't have to know the subject to play the game. You can actually learn a thing or two. However, non-intuitive commands can make the game frustrating to control. Players expecting a traditional Mario game will not find it here. So, John, sports talk. <laughs> well, or, it's more or, of the pro, or Rich. Yeah, pro sport if, if, hockey. If, if he can handle reading. Yeah, why you, oh. why, you, why don't you take pro sport <laughs> hockey, Rich? <laughs> Pro sport hockey. Well, I mean, at least they've got they've kind of got a three quarters of the way down, you know, mm -hmm. like three quarter high um, uh, aspect of you. So I'm I'm almost okay with this. It's a uh, sports scene covers more than hockey action with its look this month. I had pro sport hockey from Jalico. So I mean, it's just they've they've already talked about two. So let's just throw in a, a third one real quick. And it says uh, for the positives, it's big characters including a big easily seen puck so that's a Fuck, bonus fucking americans and their super pucks yep exactly for you americans that need a, a, a fluorescent uh line shooting across where it has been that white hasn't ice, been since like 98 white, like jesus christ you guys won't let that go will you white ice black puck how fucking hard is it you know what did need a super ball golf white sky white ball yeah it does help when they have that tracker on but i Hockey is definitely the sport that benefited the most from high def because it's so much easier to watch in high def than it is in the old oh, like. Back. Oh, look, 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 look where the players are going. That's probably where the puck is. Well, right, but it's <laughs> all right. Shut. You know what? This game has a battery backup memory. Mm. Whoa! So that's a pretty nice. sweet one. That's totally, like, I mean, totally worth it for this game. <laughs> there's, there's there's option for fatigue and home luck. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, you catch some yeah. breaks if you're the home team. It says uh, there's a narrow field of uh, view limits how you set uh, set players up, which is, I guess, so the scene that you're seeing here is basically the two face-off zones and the goalie. Right. And that's pretty much it. That's all you can see. Of so you're only player. seeing about a third of the ice of the ice surface at a time. Oh, so that must yeah. probably be closer to like a fifth or something like that's right. not much at all. Right. Um, so that makes it very hard to uh, pass accurately. 
as well because your uh, teammates are off the screen and the momentum seems particularly slow with you, I think would go with pretty much any hockey game in the You can't go tape to tape for a blue line ripper if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right. So, and then uh, moving on a little a little we'll pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, Riddick Bow Boxing. Uh, what they're saying about it, the realistic action lets you move around the rink and pick your punches. You have to outthink the computer opponents to win, and it's a good challenge in the tournament mode. However, the, ga the graphics have a cartoon feel that detracts from the otherwise realistic feel of the game. Play control isn't always responsive, and sometimes you'll throw a punch, you'll try to throw a punch, and the game won't let you, so control issues. <laughs> I feel like the cartoon graphics shouldn't be a, a negative because the yeah, kind of cool. excelled for it. Yeah, so. Yeah. Ben, what's going on with uh, the next game? Robocop versus the Terminator. Yes! Dark, menacing graphics and constant action. There's a password to save your progress. Good sound effects. <laughs> However, not much play variety. Robocop isn't agile enough. I don't, to many I don't know if it's like, a fucking tin can. <laughs> I don't think password saves are like a feature at this point. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, no. but like, oh, you have to write down in the, in the instruction manual like how to. Well, I would put that in the <sighs> side along with no. Yeah, save. there's right. probably some Super Nintendo games that were still made at this point where like someone just thought the sit the passwords or saves wouldn't be, you know, mandatory. <laughs> I just but, took a uh, Polaroid of the TV screen every time and wrote on the little. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, Mike, yeah. what's going on with the next game? Super Chase HQ. It's, it's a, a driving, driving action, action for one player. In That's kind of cool. This, in spite of the simplicity of the game, it's fun to chase bad guys and drive them off the road. So it's kind of like Burnout. It's like a cop simulator, though. So, like, you're you're the cop chase car, and the, you're chasing down the criminals. Yeah, but you don't get to shoot people while being recorded, so... Right. You gotta do the pit maneuver. <laughs> there isn't much of a challenge, but Super Chase is a change of pace from the typical race driving game. So, uh, it's got a weird HUD, kind of like Mech Warrior, where again, all you need to see is on a narrow slit in the middle of the screen. Yeah. And everything else is useless HUD. Yeah, they've, you, they've really chopped up the screen there, haven't they? So, let's see what they have to say about Winter Extreme Skiing and Snowboarding by Electro Brain. Uh, they say that it has terrific use of the Mode 7 effects for the Super Nintendo, for a superior graphics, and f feeling of speed. With good play control and a full range of play modes in the two-player alternating. However, snowboarding jump moves are very limited, and there's no freestyle, freestyle skiing or snowboarding competition, which would have been fun. It's difficult to see the track on some of the runs. Oh, it, right. it would have, it would have been nice to have the snowboarding game where as a mini game you get to play Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Oh, uh, wait, they are, oh wait, they already did that. Richard, what's the uh, Lester the Unlikely? What's going on there? Uh, well, this is a side scroller, um, mm. and uh, already looking at the picture, it looks terrible. But let's see what they have to say. <laughs> um, excellent animation, similar to Prince of Persia. The game has good learning curve, starting starting easy and becoming more challenging. There, uh, the three limited continues aren't enough for a puzzle-solving game like this, or of this sort. So you have to experiment a great deal. So, like I said, um, yeah, not fun. Kind of yeah. trudging along there. Ben, what's going on yeah, with the next on the one? For that. <laughs> next one is Dennis the Menace. They say the game has good graphics and solid overlay overall play control, although Dennis tends to drift a bit like the Adams Family characters in earlier Ocean's Ugh. games. <laughs> However, the game isn't very engaging, and the Dennis character never comes to life. Yet another licensed movie game that just... Ugh. All right. So in, in, the, in the oddball category, what do we have next, Mike? Alfred Chicken. <laughs> oh, my gosh. One of this game. Colorful graphics, lots of stages, a password, and good play control. Gee, what could be bad about it? Well, the passwords are few and far between. And since they're icons rather than numbers or letters, they are hard to use. I don't know. The icons can be easy. I don't know why they're getting at there. Like, unless you have to do, like, a long string of them. But, like, if it's just, like, four or five of them, icons can be a little bit easier. <laughs> I, would, I don't know if that's a fair critique. Yeah. But, so... All right, uh, let's see what they have to say. Uh, ben, you want to take the, the rampage? Bugs Bunny, Rabbit Rampage, beautiful graphics and often funny, wonderful live animations that are even better than Rogue Runner's Death Valley Rally. A great variety of types of stages, excellent music and sound effects. Sunsoft uses the Looney Tune license for the maximum effect and fun. However, 
Play control is slightly awkward, particularly when jumping between narrow platforms. Bugs Bunny may fall through the edges of objects in some stages. I like how they've got the eraser, um, like the, the one right. episode with um, Daffy. Right. They're erasing him and drawing him back on. That makes me kind of <laughs> want to play the game and, and see what that level's about. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's the whole thing where, like, basically yeah. the, the animator is uh, trying to do in bugs. So yeah. you have to face off the, against the pencil's creations. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, Richard, what's going on with the next game? Uh, Brett Hall Hockey? Yep. But Dude. we covered that. Well, yeah, but, like, what what are they saying about it? <laughs> he, has, he has one job to do. <laughs> hey, I'm getting there, okay? I'm getting there for the... He's he's the engine that could, yeah, a much a much superior Canadian non-union equivalent. <laughs> um, so excellent sound with the voice of Al Michaels calling the action. There are lots of good options, including fighting, full seasons, line changes, and penalties on or off. Mm. NHLPA license includes real player names for a limited time only. <laughs> Uh, it's difficult to see the marker indicating the active player, and if you can't see who has the puck, you can't make the play. Uh, the perspective can be awkward when playing at the far end of the ice. So basically it's... they're saying, and if you're an American, don't play this game <laughs> you don't know what a puck looks like. Well, it's true that like <laughs> the, pers it. the perspective on a lot of the, the games, like sports games of this day and age, made it very tough to play a lot of them. So. Yeah, excuses. Excuses. So let's see. Sports Illustrated, the, the or, football. You know, hockey's just not worth playing at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's fighting words. Fighting words. Uh, um, Sports Illustrated. Uh, don't make me go for the for the uh, Bobby Orr hat trick. Don't make Don't make me jump over that wall and come get you. You ever You ever heard of the <laughs> the Bobby Orr hat trick, Ben? No. no. So it's an it's a goal assist in a fight in one game. <laughs> 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 So let's see. We have Sports Illustrated Championship Football and Baseball by Malibu. Uh, they're saying both sports are easy to play and fun. The football game is particularly well done and with good playbooks, realistic speed, and action, uh, and some of the good options like instant replay. Pa passwords save seasons on both games, and in baseball, the out outfielders move with enough speed to make the big play. However, no major league licenses, and the SI license doesn't add anything except name recognition. The baseball season allows only 19 games. Blech. But, and I'll uh, I'll take the next one too. Uh, the Winter Olympics games uh, from U.S. Gold. The variety of events gives players a lot to master. Real names and courses are used in the game, matching this year's Olympic competition. Multiple language option makes the game truly international. Huzzah! But some of the play controls for certain events are not intuitive, particularly for speed stating and biathlon. Only the bobsled and luge events give you a sense of speed. Multiple language options, so you so you can slide down the hill in German. <laughs> Take it to the house. <laughs> all right, all right, and then uh, Ben, oh, what's going on? Oh, all right, fine, Mikey. <laughs> Zool, Ninja of the Nth Dimension. I've never fucking heard of this game. If, there, if you're into cartoony space ninja action with plenty of candy canes thrown in, you'll drool over Zool, Ninja of the Nth Dimension. Zool jumps and zaps his way through seven levels of unremitting, yet somehow unworthy of coverage, platform action. There is no Dana, only Zool. Good graphics and a comic style. Good play control. However, it's too cute to be cool. Very derivative. <laughs> Backgrounds look like they came from Super Mario World. Is Nintendo shitting on their own game? It's not their game. Super Mario World is. No, they're, well, saying, they're saying they ripped copy, them off yeah. in Super Mario World. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> really, nobody got the Ghostbusters reference? <laughs> I got it. Bow before Zool. No, there is no Dana. Only Neil Zool. before Z Zool. No, he, no, it's Neil before Zod. Fuck. It's, you know when, uh... I know, you know I'm Vic messing with you. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Rich, take the next one. Uh, the Art of Fighting. This is by, uh, Takara, and actually is one of the more expensive games, uh, at $70. Uh, most of the games we've been looking at so far have been, uh, what is it, 59 or 64. So this one's a little more expensive, and it's a tournament fighting for two players, plus an adventure mode. So wow. hopefully it's worth your money for all that. Uh, it says good graphics and challenging play set. This street fighting game near the top of the heap. 
In spite of its strengths, Art of Fighting doesn't have the appeal of Street Fighter 2 Turbo or Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Same engine, less recognizable skin. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. That's, that's like saying, like, oh, yeah. I wonder why, um, uh, what was that, uh, Clay Fighters didn't do so well. <laughs> it, it went for a nice artistic style, though. This just looks like like Street Fighter-style like style people, yeah. but just people you don't know. Terrible. Yeah, like Art of Fighting the Chris Brown game. <laughs> or oh, what was that guy that nailed the, that beat up the girl in the elevator? Ray Rice. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that would be. That, that was the one that beat up his dog at home. That's Michael, Michael Vick. Vick. Oh yeah, Michael Vick. John, you want to take Alfred Chicken? I want to take all the Game Boy. Hide your beagle, Vixen Eagle. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Alfred Chicken, uh, the NES game from Mindscape. They say that there's large areas and nice graphics with some fun comic touches. However, the character Alfred is new. Most of the gameplay is pretty standard. Jumping and collecting. You're looking at this screenshot here. It doesn't look like a bird. It looks like a guy with a black backwards cap. At least they achieved getting the game out for both platforms in the same month. Yeah, Which at least they tough. made the the a wise achievement of putting out a second a shittier version of the game on a dying system. <laughs> Smart move. Yes. All right, Ben. What's going on with our Game Boy? All right, <clears throat> Spider Man and X Men: The Arcade's Revenge. Mm. A great improvement in graphics over earlier Spider Man. Uh, nice yeah. <laughs> Putting the X Men in a worse worst scenario, nightmare scenario was fun. However, very similar to the Super NES game, no continues and no passwords in a long game with seven stages. Play control is still a bit awkward. They put, they put a little bit of shine on the and turd, but it's still a turd, is what they're saying. Yes. <laughs> and then I have the next game here, Aliens vs. the Predator, from mm. Netflix, which is awful. It's one of the worst games I've ever played. <laughs> it says, uh, it's again from Activision, it says, uh, good graphics and a cool concept. However, the aliens are few and far between. The resulting challenge isn't very high. Uh, I'd say finding your way out of the levels and you know, <laughs> watching the predator painfully plod through the, the level is painful <laughs> enough. <clears throat> okay. Real Ghostbusters. So, the game based on the cartoon, based on the movie. Um, it says, puzzle elements add to a different challenge. Add a different challenge to this action game. A password lets you resume play when you want. However, actions are not always intuitive and some of the graphics aren't very clear. Has anybody played so the Ghostbusters a, on the Game Boy? No. So wait, like, it's a Ghostbusters game, but you can only play as Venkman? Yeah, apparently. Ugh. That's garbage. Whatever. And then we have uh, The Simpsons, Bart and the Beanstalk. It says, graphically cool characters and enemies, fun concept. However, play, poor control, slow with drift, hard to control Bart. The length of time it takes to defeat bosses can make it tedious. Hmm. And they already dissed it way harder in their actual feature. <laughs> oh, let's read about Barbie's supermodel in the ratings. 2.9 graphics, 3 play control, 2.4 challenge, and 2.9 for theme and fun. Wow, it's surprising it's that high. Yeah, they uh, game type modeling. Yeah, modeling. <laughs> and, and nothing else. Most of the rest of the stuff is in the 3s and 2s, so pretty... Blah month. Alfred Chicken got hit pretty hard. 3.0, 2.0 on the NES. 3.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3.0. Mm. So. Oh my god, Mario's Time Machine is in the same pocket. It's like 3 for graphics. 2.5. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that means it got lower than Barbie for playability. Pro, pro Sport Hockey is all in the, in, the, in the high twos, so that's pretty rough. Real Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. yeah, real Ghostbusters yeah, right around three. three. They're not really endorsing very much this month. I guess they're saying kind of Bugs Bunny is kind of around four, you know, except for the Winter what, Extreme play control. They, yeah, Winter Extreme they did pretty well. Bugs Bunny. Yeah, they awesome. gave it great graphics seven. rating, four point five. That's really high. So, this yeah, is okay, let's, it's out of five. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Let's bounce through. Uh, right. Mar uh, Mario's time machine. Mario's time yeah. machine has less challenge than Barbie. <laughs> All right. That's hilarious. So what's going on in the pack watch? Pack watch. We're talking about uh, Jungle Book, and it's got uh, Disney's Jungle Book for Super NES, and the NES, and then it mentions a game called Black. Gee, one, from one looks considerably better. And look at the font they chose: orange for the Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Kale sure. Surprise. 
Right. The what Black is this Blackthorn game? Up. It sounds interesting. Uh, it looks kind of like Donkey Kong Country a little bit, like in the. I tried playing it. It was it's... very frustrating to me. But... Mm. Huh. Knights of Let's Justice. Here. It says, along with Blackthorn came Lord of the Rings, the classic, classic Tolkien fantasy come to life. <laughs> Beginning in says, Hobbiton. Frodo Baggins <laughs> must uh, collect his followers and hit the road to escape the Black Riders. Oh, is so this, that's not the game we're looking at. He takes players through the first book of the trilogy. Wow, so this is actually, is it, I mean, no, I guess they don't they, have to have a license, so. They, they, apparently they're talking about a second game that they're not showing us at all. Two games, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, two games. Which all is right. really great coverage. Thanks, Nintendo. Mm. You really fucked they it don't up. Talk about, they don't talk about Blackthorn at all. So they show pictures of Blackthorn, and they talk about uh, the Lord of the Rings. Which really, which really tells you how substantial Blackthorn is. Yeah. Then they have uh, Knights of Justice from Enix down below. Mm. This looks all right. Yeah. I think I think so, you have to play King Arthur, and you uh, rescue and assemble the Knights of the Round. <laughs> looks like it, yeah. And then we have Spike McFane. It's made by Enix. Which is Shit. a great name. Uh. Yep, mentioned that. And we have Spike McFane. From Bulletproof. Which I think they renamed this. This isn't called Spike McFane. It's called, like, Young Dracula. Yeah, Kid, or, Kid Dracula or something. Kid Dracula, yeah. They uh, renamed that. But, yeah, we'll get to that one, I'm sure, when it comes out. It's a decent uh, action uh, adventure game. Huh. And uh, here's something for John. The, uh, the Sandusky College football game. <laughs> Just wait for the shower mode. <laughs> All right. Bill Walsh, college football. Enough said. And we have fire. Well, wait, wait, wait. We're not gonna like. So Bill Walsh <laughs> was an NFL coach. Why the fuck do we have a college football game? It, that'd be like, I don't know, Bill Belichick, college football. Like it doesn't make any sense. Pat for, Riley, college football. Yeah. Vince McMahon, college wrestling. Right. <laughs> there you go. I'd actually play that. That'd be amazing. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. All right. Uh, yeah. Expel. Fire Team Rogue, which I'd never heard of. It doesn't look like it came out. Uh, it's a, a platformer that uses the same kind of graphics like Mortal Kombat. So it's like photos of a dude wearing like a head mask. It's awkward looking. And they have Liberty or Death, which I'm guessing comes from Koei, and it certainly does. Okay. <laughs> And you get to fight the Simpsons is, uh, in Springfield. It's like uh, Nobunaga's Ambition. Um, Amer <laughs> the, American uh, Edition. <laughs> the American Edition. Yeah, Fireteam Rogue, Rogue, Fire Rogue, Fire Rogue never came out, unfortunately. Called it. But uh, there are some people that try, have tried to get the like the ROM out there to pe for people to try. Mm. So. so, Liberty or Death, which is uh, Washington's Ambition. Yep. Then um, just, uh, they're bouncing across uh, games here. Star Trek for, looks like, Super NES, Flintstones, Stunt Race FX, Sound Fantasy, Ninja Warrior. Then we have something called Matrix Prime, <laughs> which I'm guaranteeing never came out. This guy looks like Cable. Uh, uh, kind of like Colossus and um, what's the communist? The Omega, Omega Red. Yeah, Omega Red. Omega, yeah. yeah, Colossus and Omega Red had a baby. <laughs> they overcame prime. their political differences. Colossus and Omega Red. They overcame their political differences and their male biology. Mm -hmm. We have Itchy and Scratchy for the Game Boy, and then Disney's Beauty and the Beast for Super Nintendo. Game as old as yeah, time. time. <laughs> What's coming out? Came out from the east. <laughs> Blow on the cartridge. <laughs> we have uh, NBA Jam coming out next month. <laughs> Wolfenstein 3D, Super R Type 3, The Flintstones, Metal Marines. And they also have a big 16 page strategy special for Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Bam! Oh, they also have the nominees for the Nestor Awards coming up. Do you have your, tra do you have your trading cards in your, uh, in your issue? Yeah. Uh, those were torn out. Mm. Uh, looks like. Lost a time. But we can tell you. It was the Lost Vikings, T2, the arcade game, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Golf, Act Razor 2, and Mega Man 4. With All Mega right. Man looking extremely fucking evil as he usually does. <laughs> All mm. right, and then we have uh, eight great Nintendo offers. So from your marketing department and Kellogg's, your anti-masturbatory cereal company, let's see. <laughs> um... 
anything good going on here. Let's see, there's a game watch, Star Fox game watch offer. So they tried to make like a what a, a board game. You, you can make your own Mario adventure what? using packages of Kellogg's corn pops. You get paint and brushes in your Fruit Loops, and a Star Fox flight cap. Fly high with this exclusive offer from Kellogg's. Play video games instead of touching. It. Play. You can play with yourself instead of playing with yourself. Mm -hmm. So nice. Nintendo sticker cards, one free inside of Kellogg's Apple Jacks cereal. Collect all four, and then for Raisin Bran. Fucking Raisin Bran. Keep yourself regular. Hey, I like Raisin Bran. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Raisin Bran is regular. I, I agree. Yeah, you've been outvoted. Yeah, you've been voted off oh. the island, bitch. Oh, uh, that's right. Dried up grapes. <laughs> um, so. Never mind the rest of the stuff on this page. You've got the Pez uh, dispensers we got Cocoa Krispies. With Mario. Remember Cocoa Krispies? Yum. Mm. No. But yeah, look that that game watch for the corn. It makes yeah, yeah. makes right. eating cornflakes almost worth. Yeah, almost worth it. You know. The only thing almost. that I ever got from the cornflakes was the stupid alarm clock that actually sounded like the rooster. Me too. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> oh, it was ridiculous. Both me and my sister got one of those. <laughs> Did they have that offer in America, or was it just a Canadian-only thing? Uh, I don't remember all the cereal offers. I do not recall this. Well, so wow. apparently you two jumped on it, so Mazel Tov. All right, and then apparently there's also an offer here where you can get more uh, Nintendo Power Points if you send in box tops for uh, Nintendo oh stuff. Boy. So, hey, well, at least it's something, I guess. But you can and use then we have to buy games, right? Um, I think it's swag. I don't think it's games. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, it's bad enough that you have to eat friggin' Raisin Bran. Now you don't get to, you don't even get to, like, con have it contribute to your games. I mean, John, the benefit, the benefit. Say that? What? What do you get with it? Swag. Swag. Mike, what do we get with it? Swag. That is so weird. It's like the American versus Canadian. <laughs> we say it like an SCH, and we say it like no a swag is like probably right. I'm just being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. Anyway. I'm sorry. That just yeah, no, you're yeah. fine. Oh. No, I was yeah, being stupid. Yeah, I, that wasn't cause, legit. Because <laughs> we know that Justin Bieber didn't go all around saying swag. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, and then we have a. Uh, uh, Customer service ad way beyond uh, how to how to call in and get the service for your Nintendo. So that that wraps up the issue. Hey, oh. we need to we need to figure out how to buy that number. I mean, it's really <laughs> out of service. Wouldn't it be fucking great if we bought that number? That's a no. We called it. We called it. It, it does work. To the Nintendo Power. What was the number that wasn't available then? It was like a local number they put in. Like it was a local yeah. number. Yeah. Which well, good luck. It, like the power luck. I don't care because we're not going to do it. So <laughs> it was like the Captain Nintendo one. Yeah, as a, a, uh, as a Google Voice number, guys. <laughs> Get right on that. Yeah. All right, uh, Rich. Thanks for coming on, and being our guest. Uh, anything you'd like to plug before you head out of here? Um, yeah, I guess uh, like I said uh, at the end of the last episode, just uh, come by and check out the Facebook page for my uh, new upcoming podcast, uh, the Pop Chatter Podcast. That's P O P. C H A T R, um, and come by, check out the Facebook page. Just kind of putting up some articles and stuff like that. But uh, come by, check it out, and I will be releasing the podcast uh, hopefully sooner than later. And it's just uh, a little bit of everything pop culture, um, fun, and uh, that's it. Yeah, gonna have uh, lots of different people on, uh, both from the Geek Fallout days and more. And uh, we'll go from there. So, hope to uh, see you all on the Facebook page. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> and if anyone wants to reach out to, to us, you can find us on facebook.com slash playingwithpowerpodcast. If you'd like to listen to old issues, old episodes, you can go to our website, playingwithpowerpodcast.com. Uh, please leave us a review and rating on iTunes, if that's what you use. It helps us get the word out, and uh, it's free marketing for us to spread the word about the show. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to Mike on Twitter, he's at GetThePower88. And if you'd like to become a sponsor of the show, um, we also have a Patreon going where you can sponsor the show, give us a few bucks. Patreon.com slash PlayingWithPower. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Ben. I'm Mike. And I'm John. And now you're playing with power. Wow!
Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. Okay. And I'm Richard. <laughs> and Richard. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's your outtake. Yes, don't get it on in the next intro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>